All right, so Ableton, Ableton Live. Um, if you've not got Ableton at the moment, I should share my screen so you can see me. If you've not got it at the moment, there's a 90 day free trial that they're still doing. So that's like, that's the full suite. You can export any tunes that you make, um, save them as Ableton files and open them elsewhere. So if you haven't got the full suite, I recommend getting that. Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to be 90 days for, but it's a, it's a wicked, it's a wicked option. All right, so this is Ableton. This is the first screen that you're gonna see, uh, and it's called Session View. And it's the main thing that, that differentiates it um, a, a, apart from other doors, so like Logic or Reason or Fruity Loops. Um, and the main difference is that the tracks are vertical. So this is an audio track here. And I'll just play a little, play a little clip. So unlike, let's say logic or any other door it's not linear so it doesn't time doesn't begin and end so if i just go into this arrangement screen hit on the arrangement i can play my loop it's got a beginning definite beginning uh definite end it's gonna change abruptly so you can kind of make up a track bit by bit it will change groove and confuse you but um, that's how usual doors work. In Ableton, you get clips or loops, but they loop around infinitely. So this is just going to play as long as your computer has battery. And as you can see, I can bounce between different clips. And also, as you can probably see, I can only play one clip at a time. So. I mean, this is the main thing that like baffles people, but as soon as you've got this concept down, the rest is quite easy. I'm gonna open another track. Uh, because I'm playing audio clips, let me double click on this. Audio clips, anything that, you that is recorded by a microphone or sent through speakers will be audio. Looks like that, looks like an audio wave. So I'm gonna, I've opened another audio track and I can just sort of drag these clips on. So now I can play two at a time. To play the other two, I need to open some more audio tracks. So shortcut for that is Command and T if you're on a Mac. And I can just move them along. Uh, we've got our faders there. This is just like a, a regular mixing desk. So we can fade. We can solo. Mute separate tracks. So we've got all, oh, we can also pan here. So the nice thing about this is that, you know, I use it when I write as a springboard. So I'll get, I'll have different um, like musical ideas. So maybe I'll have a bass line, but I'll have a couple of variations of bass line. Uh, and it's really good for just auditioning, um, auditioning different clips. Right? Uh, so you can have a few ideas on your bass and you can rename it up here. So And then when you're happy, once you're happy with it, once you're happy with some kind of structure or your ideas, you can then record it into the arrangement view. To flip between the two, just press tab, or you can press this little jobby up here, right? So once you're happy with your loop, just press stop, make sure your transport, transport uh, window is set to one, and then just press record. And then if I go into my arrangement view, you can see that it's, well, recording them. So I can start just like juggling bits. You get the gist. It's pretty simple. Um, a lot of the time it's good to start off with like these, these kind of little audio loops just so you get a feel of, yeah, a feel of, of the interface really. Um, but we're gonna be making, we're gonna be using some audio, but we're gonna be building from scratch today. So let's get rid of everything. And I'm just gonna leave myself with an audio track. Um, and I'm just gonna show you around the interface just so you can get a little bit more familiar. Um, we're going to be getting familiar with navigating live, but you're also going to be programming some 
instruments in and then also we'll look at a little bit deeper at how to structure and add effects and stuff like that. So interface, we've got these little triangles that open and close. Uh, so we've got the browser, that's your library. If you're new to production, this is where all your sounds are going to be split up into categories. So we've got collections, sound categories, and then places. But it's basically everywhere where you can find the sounds and the effects that you're going to be using. So we can hide that to make it a little bit clearer. And then we've got this really handy box at the bottom left. And this is just the info view. So it allows me to just see what everything means really good if you're working with an ableton it's, it has to be ableton stock plugins but like an ableton instrument that you're not familiar with or an effect um like it tells you that that's the track volume and or it tells you that this is the pan but then it goes a little bit deeper as well so i i still have this open just to sort of get me familiar with things but we can show we can clear up the screen especially good if you're working on a little laptop uh, you might want to just sort of minimize things to make your workflow a little bit cleaner. Um, and then we've got this one down here. This is just the track view. So you can see whatever you place on your track, which we'll go into. And we've talked about these here. That's just arrangement and session. And then we've got these little show and hides or, or show and tells here. So we've got, this is just your little routing matrix. So we can take the audio around, put route that audio to another track. We won't get into that now though. Um, and then we've got, we can show and hide the mixer. All right, so unless, um, Tony, just let me know if there's any questions just about that little section. Sure thing. Uh, if not, we'll move on. Any questions, people? Um, there's none at the moment, but you know, some of you might have some pressing questions or maybe something about the loops that you saw earlier. Okay, I think we, we're- we can, Have you got any? No, I think we're good at the moment. Good, I think that was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, all right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna look at audio tracks, and I've already, already mentioned that audio tracks contain audio samples. So I'm gonna go to this collections um, section of the, of the browser. Uh, and this is basically, it's, it's a way of tagging uh, bits in your library. So you can tag instruments, and you can tag effects. So I've just chosen some things for this session and I've got the shaker loop. So I'm going to put the shaker loop in the audio. Um, and this is something I think I got from Splice. Um, and it just, the nice thing about Ableton, you put a loop in, it's going to speed or slow down that loop according to the tempo. So like now, let's put it to just this one. And so here I can, I can do a few things with the audio tracks, uh, with the audio samples. I'm going to transpose it a little bit. Just change, I can change sort of the texture a little bit. If I go a bit too high, it becomes a little bit robotic and you might want that, but I'm just going to do it a couple of semitones. You can also change the volume within the clip as well. So this is what I was talking about, the track detail, so we can either collapse that or expand it. So I've got this little shaker. I'm going to turn it down here. Something nice that you can do as well is, is change like the bar length. So at the moment we've got, this is one bar long, but if we just go to this loop brace here, we can just bring it down. So it's three beats. Um, and this will be really nice set against a four, four pattern, which I'm going to, which I'm going to do. It's going to give it a little bit more of an evolving texture. It will stop it sounding um, too straight. So we've got this audio track with an audio clip in it, pretty straightforward. Uh, so, but I want to put some drums in and I want to play the drums in, or I want to program the drums in. And um, we're going to use an instrument called a drum rack. And because it's an instrument, I'm going to open a MIDI track. So MIDI tracks here and now MIDI tracks is anything or MIDI is anything that I, you know, I can draw in with a pencil. So if I, if I double click this space, you can see I've got this piano roll and I can start putting some notes in. I can, I can change the length of the notes. I can change the pitch of the notes. Um, I can change how hard the notes by this velocity button here, how hard they, how hard they hit. So it's a little bit like a, like a musical score. Um, but at the moment, 
it's not going to play anything because I've not got an instrument there. So I'm going to delete this clip and then bring in a drum rack. So for, to choose a drum kit, I'm going to go scroll down to drums um, and then I can either choose single drum hits, don't want that yet, or I can select whole kits. So here, I'm going to pick an 808, just need to double click and then it appears. So what's nice about this, I can either play it on my controller or I can pencil it in. So I'm going to pencil it in so you can see what I'm doing. So double click on that clip. And then what you can see now happening is I've got this piano roll that's still here, but then it's, got, it's named my sections. So I'm going to put a kick in. And again, I can just select all of those, bring that velocity up. So they're hitting quite hard and then play that and it will, it will sort of loop quite nicely with my shakers. So let me just affect the shakers. So you'll see me doing like a few different shortcuts. It's, it's really good to, to learn your shortcuts. They're in the manual or you can get pages that take you through them all. So by an accident, I will do some shortcuts, but wherever possible, I'll show you how to do it sort of manually. So I'm just flicking from this view to that view by pressing shift and tab. Um, so I'm going to go back to my instrument and you can see my kicks here. And this is, so on the drum rack, every single cell, so these are all cells, hold an instrument. So the instrument here is sampler and this is my kick. So it's a bit boomy for the tempo that I've got, got really long decay. So I can just neaten that up a little bit. So that's a little bit better, so I'll keep it like that. So then I'm going to go back in and just start building my rhythm. So let's just turn that down even more. So we've got a snare and then you can actually audition some of your sounds by going through the piano roll like this. Just make sure that headphone is hit. And then let's put some claps in. And, and let's find some shakers. So you can duplicate this command and D will then duplicate a section to speed your life up. So now we've got uh, a basic beat and we can do a few things here, but um, before we do, I want to give it a little bit of groove. Um, and I think this is, it's really important to like, understand about groove at these early stages. Um, it was something that I didn't get my head around into ages. And it was, it was the very thing that was stopping my track sounding from sounding like tracks that I really liked. Just to, um, give, a head, just to give a heads up, Mel, um, Taylor asked exactly the same question. So he'll be very happy. Taylor asked how to get it more groovy. Well, just about groove in general. Um, um, and then how to, you know, utilize groove. Uh, we've been able to yeah yeah so yeah um let me play you the the shaker so this this shaker loop was recorded in um i assume by hand uh so it's got if we if we zoom in we can see these sort of little grid points um we can see where the beats stop and start i can change this division just by right clicking just so i can get some wider grids so you can see this sort of the spaces here the hits aren't exactly on the space. And that's because someone has played it in. So it's got all of this um, human error, which is a good thing. So you've got um, this, you know, the particular artists or programmer, whoever did this, their sense of time and their sense of groove. Were they playing a little bit delayed? Did they have a little bit more swag? Were they playing very straight? However they were playing, there's going to be some imperfections. And so when I go about programming, programming a drum in this manner by placing everything in with a pencil it's not having it's not getting any of those imperfections so it's it's gonna um it's just a bit too computerized and if i was making very fast marchy techno that would be fine but um i don't want to do that in this case so what we want to do is we want to impose some kind of timing and feel um, and so we do that by groove so i'll show you how that works Gonna go into my drum and if we go to the or my drum pattern and if we go to the left hand side, I can open this little hot swap. 
button. You'll see this button throughout live um, and it's basically, it, it's a link between the device or the clip and the browser. So you'll see hot swap groove and it's taking me straight to the groove library and I've got all of these different types of groove. So if I was making more of a hip hop track, I'd get, you can, and you can hear that that's a little bit, a little bit swingy. Um, when you swing something, it's just when you um, delay every other note. So it just gives it a little bit of, of groove. I'm using the same word to describe it. But in this case, anyway, I'm gonna use MPC, really famous sampler that had some um, very famous swing settings. So I'm going to go to MP16, MPC16, and that's because I'm I'm essentially I'm working with these little sixteenth parts, right? So I'm going to go to choose that sixteen, and then I'm going to choose a percentage, and that's this bit here. So sixty-six, and then just going to listen to how that sounds. So to the keen ear, you'll hear that it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more swingy, a little bit more groovy. It's still not completely there yet. There are other things that we can do, but once you're happy with the, the general feel, we can just press commit. And then you can see here how the snare is like slightly off in both times. And so it's that little bit of a swing, a little delay there that's just gonna help carry things. So there are other things that we can do. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna layer this with some shakers and I'll show you how we can use velocity um, and not just velocity here, which we also could do, um, but how we can use an effect to randomize the velocity as well. Again, like given a, a bit of a human feel. Uh, so I'm gonna say, I'm trying not to shortcut here, but I'm gonna open a shortcut for a new MIDI track or create, uh, insert MIDI track. Um, and then I'm going to just grab a drum rack and let's get to the spot. drum rack and I'm just going to choose the default drum rack and it's exactly the same as this one but it's not populated so um, this means that I can again use this hot swap and choose different um, choose different samples so I'm going to just hot swap there I could choose any number of snares but I'm going to go to what I prepared earlier and grab an egg shaker and do another one and grab uh, this shaker. You can also just, I mean, I don't know why I didn't do this. You can also just drag it in that way as well. There, there are often like loads of different ways to do any one thing, but yeah, let's just get a simple pattern in here. I've chosen these just because well, I've, I've chosen two just to give a little bit of variation and maybe put another one. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is apply my groove. You can see it's just knocks that last one off. So that's all well and good, but it's still um, not completely vibing so I'm going to go back into the track and I'm going to add something called a velocity MIDI effect uh, uh, which is here so let's go to velocity now anything in live you can open um, a little arrow or anything but any device open a little arrow and it will take you to the presets so you don't have to know how to program um, like whole drum kits or different effects you can just take some pre-made ones. So this one is just gonna add some randomness to the velocity of these shakers. So you're gonna hear how that's a little bit more all over the place, which we want. So I'm just gonna bring the sound, bring the volume down there. Um, a little thing about MIDI effects. Um, there's two types of effects. We'll look at audio effects later, but MIDI effects are basically any effects that I'm just going to explain what I've read, <laughs> but it's any effect that like changes the MIDI in some way. So as you have you seen with velocity, you also get MIDI effects that change the pitch um, and the timing. Uh, so we just use the velocity one here, but we'll be using some more later on. So the second thing, and maybe the last thing that I'm going to do with this 
uh, with this drum kit here is I'm going to go out and I'm going to swap out some of the sound. So here, not a massive fan of the snare or the clap for this one. So instead of just putting entire, well, one shot samples like I did with the edge shakers, I'm going to go in and I've got a little break. And I kind of like the lo-fi-ness of that snare. So I'm going to bring the break in like this. And so I can, I can either like play this whole break, but it will sound. I mean, I don't know why anyone would do that, but <laughs> you could, and you might find that, you know, it works. But I'm just going to isolate a snare. And then we can fade the tail so it doesn't clip a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same on that clap. Another way of doing this would just be to alt drag it. So hold down alt, drag it over onto that clap. And then just for variation, like we did with the egg shakers, um, just choose a different snare. Because this is obviously a live drummer. So the way that they hit each snare is going to be different. So we're getting like a little bit of that human error in. Tony, if there's any questions, just um, just ask me as, sure thing. as I go along. Good, good so far. There's a question about um, creating your own grooves. I think we should approach that a bit later because um, yeah, yeah. there's a few ways of tackling that, right? So Yeah, yeah, yeah you can remind me at the end yeah, and, sure thing. or when you feel right. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so I've got these two snares here. And so the next thing would be to maybe just turn the volume down of them. So with our drum kit, we can just go to this little arrow. If you see a little arrow, just, just click it. There's, there's often something interesting there. So here is just all of that, the group of tracks. So we can go in, maybe just, just take one of those down. Um, and also to get to, you know, expand the groove of the individ individual instruments, go in and you could take this random and maybe put it on the snare. So let me go to MIDI effects and I'm going to, on, on one of these break snares. And you can just change the amount of random so you can have less random. Um, and again, put it on, I don't want any uh, random velocity on my kick, but you can just go through and um, just sort of make it up as you go along. Uh, so here I've, I've got my, I've got a bit of a groove and I'm just going to, shift select them because I want to group them together and so I just go to the this contextual menu click group tracks and then I can rename this as drums keeps it neat for a start and it also allows me to come back later on and process them I can also once I've got my levels right here just turn the level up and down okay so the next thing, I'm going to add um, another instrument. So we've added um, the drums, which are MIDI. Before um, we do that, now, yeah, yeah, before yeah. we do that, Mel, um, has anyone got any questions about um, drums? And we've got, we've got a question about creating your own grooves that we're going to explore later. So really good question. Um, has anyone got any pressing questions or thoughts or um, something they'd want Mel to review again, go back on perhaps just for clarity? Are you all just deep in it, right? Cool. Okay. So um, there's a question here from Caroline. Um, oh, oh, here we go. See, look at you. Look, look at you. <laughs> um, all right. Calm down, man. Calm down. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But good questions. Keep them coming. But yeah. So a uh, question from Caroline. Um, How do you get samples to play up and down in pitch from the drum from the drum rack? Um, from the drum rack. So, so let's get to the drum rack here. So what you can do a couple of things, you can, you can transpose from in the drum rack. So let me just, so as long as it's on, I mean, it can be on classic as well. You've, you've got different settings. Now it's on one shot. I can just, I can transpose like this. There's um, a, um, a more complicated way, which I think is a little bit too advanced for this session, but that would just be, 
by um, opening up this chain here and then um, playing it on. So this at the moment it's C3. Anytime you play a sample in, um, if you play C3, which is middle C on, on a piano roll, it will always um, play at the same pitch. Now, if that was to be um, D3 or, you know, C4, then it's, oh, D3 is lower. But anyway, it'll be higher. So you could, if you want to get like really nerdy, you could do that. I've never felt the need to ever do that. So it would just be a case of transposing within simpler, simpler as that instrument. Cool. Um, yeah, then one final question on this. Oh, okay, maybe two more. So um, Christian was asking, um, how do you add different drum tracks onto one track? I'm assuming he's talking about variations. So at the moment you've focused on just having say, one pattern, one clip, right? Yeah. So, say so what might be useful is maybe to show how you can create variations from, say, say the pink, pink one, mm -hmm. or, or no, uh, I, 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 no from, actually from go go from the yeah, yeah, go from yeah. the way. So maybe you know de deconstruct that and show how you can sure. create variations. And All right. So it, to, when I'm when I'm writing, what I will usually do is my first my first clip or my first groove will just like have everything on it. So I'll come and maybe let's get a, an open hi hat there not a very nice one for this but yeah so i might have this and i'll have this you know this motif this this one idea and then i'll double the track so there'll be two ways that i'm going to make variations i'm going to make variations within the clip so if i duplicate the loop then i could add like a little fill here and this is really i'll probably get rid of that open hi-hat there so this is a really nice way of not having to keep on programming your whole groove and so i could duplicate this again now i've got a four bar loop with every two bars i've got this little fill but the end of i'm going to also delete that there um wait, i'm just concentrating on these snares here but like maybe it's not a snare um just i would just keep sort of evolving that clip Oops. so maybe i'll change that as well here and just make this um a little bit more interesting oh sorry microphone and i'll probably come in, come in and, and do some ghost notes so that's just kind of like the the drummer hitting the snare really lightly just to give some implied groove um so that's what i'll probably do to create variations within the clip and once you have that what's really handy is if you then duplicate the clip. So if I hit duplicate, I've got two versions of the same clip that I can juggle around with as I did in the beginning. But then I might say, actually what I'll do is command all or control all, and then I'll zero them all out. And then I'll just hit one of the lines and zero that in. So now I just have a, I just have a kick loop. So then I can keep duplicating and then on the next one, I might bring that snare in. And then save my last space for everything in. Um, but yeah, so that's how I create some variations. And then you can, if you want some, you know, if you want a little bit more control, I find it really handy to then open up the actual group and if you right click and extract the chain what it does is it spits out that whole cell outside of the outside of your group uh, but it allows you to process it it just shows you the midi for that particular one um, and so you can create variations that way as well is that all right tone oh excellent cool is that cool christian and on that note, one thing that also just to give a heads up on um, later on, um, he had another question that was around um, you to look, maybe creating your own drum rack. Um, he's recorded a few sounds from different sources, different external yeah, yeah. Um, instruments and stuff. So it'd be good to maybe just show how you populate a drum rack. Drum rack. Yeah. yeah. So, Let's yeah, I mean, just it's, it's exactly the same way as we did with the shakers. So you'd have an, a drum rack that's empty. So just go to drums, open up rack, and then wherever you i would i would get your samples in a folder so for example here in my samples folder and i might have 
a found sound well I might have I do have a found sound section and then from there I can just bring in some little ideas that I have you can also go into other kits that you like and steal or borrow uh, their their samples if you do this though it's really really important that you before you close or move around your your file that you go to file and then you collect all and save and what that what live does then is it, it takes a copy from um, all of all of the locations where you've um, pilfered your samples from um, and then it will be in your own samples folder cool thank you okay okay so i'll move on to um doing a little bit of a putting some cords in <laughs> so, it's not that bad <laughs> So um, I'm going to open a MIDI track and I'm going to go to my instruments and uh, electric. So you've got a range of synths, uh, electric keyboard, um, some synths, you've got an FM synth and th this was the simpler that we've been working on uh, in the drum kit. But let's go to electric. And so here, let's just make sure we're on the right drum kit. Okay, so here what we can do is we can start programming something in. So uh, I'm going to play in F minor. So I'm just going to put in a little pattern. And it's this, exactly the same way as we would do in our drum rack. Um, but we just don't have the names of the instruments. Because why would you? So, and you can just start penciling things in as you like. Right, so we've just got like a single note um, pattern going on. Now, lots of people don't have um, music theory um, knowledge or don't have music theory, and that's um, Ableton and loads of doors are really. Um, they have the solution. Um, so there, there are lots of effects that you can use to like overcome these gaps in knowledge. So for example, um, this is something I use all the time. If I go to MIDI effects, go to chord. Again, open the preset bit, house four to go. And what this does is it takes your one note pattern and just applies a chord on the top. Um, to make sure that you are in key, you need to pair that with a scale function. So you've got your chord function that, you know, in this case, it's given me four notes above, two notes above and one note below. So three, but four in total. Um, and the scale function will just kind of quantize that. So it's all in time. Uh, so I'm going to choose my scale. I actually have, I always write in Dorian. So um, I, that's my default preset. I'm just going to change my bass to F because remember, I'm playing in F here. And this will just make sure that, you know, anything that I press will hopefully, maybe not that one. So you can just start building something up and it's just, it's a really, really easy way of, yeah, of getting some ideas. What I'm going to do to this as well, this also needs some groove. So I'm going to go back to my groove pool and you can see that it's, it's stored my groove in there. So I'm just going to press commit and you can see that that E chord and it's starting to give it a little bit more shuffle, a little bit more swing. Um, I'm also going to go to that, to, to the velocity and throw add some random on there as well. Um, you can also, I mean, one, you could also play this in, that would be one way of doing it, but you can also go in and, and move things along if you don't want them to be so on the grid here. Just to get, momentarily to get a bit deeper into the groove pool, if we open up this section here, 
we've got this groove pool and what you can do if you want to get a little bit more human error if you want it to be a bit more bouncy then you can just turn up the random and this will randomize anything so 100 percent, it would just sound completely whack but i usually keep it like below 20 um and we need to just go back there we go so then i need to recommit that and then what you'll see is some of these in between notes also being knocked off as, as well so it's yeah it's getting really like drunk as a rhythm um so yeah it's pretty simple with the with the keyboard we can apply some effects later to get it to gel but um i'll crack on uh, so let's add a bass line and i wanted to tell you about packs as well so if i open this midi track we've got all of our our instruments here so we can we can scroll by like timbre or by you know the character so we've got all our bases it's really like a lucky dip and a lot of the time um it's not very lucky so i find that like building up building up your packs building up your samples um is that you know it's a surefire way to get your own sound and to save you all of this bother so ableton has um a section called packs in its website hopefully here it is so um there's some free ones and there'll be like free samples so sometimes gold pay baby do um a free lot on here um this is really good i think this has loads of breaks in it so this is free um so you can go in and download as many free packs as you can otherwise um you pay for them but they're not that expensive i say looking at 39 pounds um sometimes you can get them for a little bit cheaper and you're also um your version of live will come with some packs as well so this pack that i had was uh guitar and bass you can see here so it's just a little bit of a live bass uh, that we can drag in um and this is something called a multi-sample patch so we you know the the more information we put in like velocity information mainly we're going to get different versions of the same note played on the bass so you know it's not the best um, bass sound but it's it's all right so i'm going to go back to my f okay so this is my bass i don't want to follow that chord uh, what i do want to do is bring over my cheeky little scale device whatever i press now is going to be in key so i don't have to really think about the pitch uh, just the rhythm and i'm going to go over to an f and let's put it there so i usually write a bass line with um on the same kind of on the same note so i'll get the rhythm and then maybe move it around a little bit like this and going back to the question before about variations this is a really good example of that i'm just going to duplicate this loop so command and d and so then i can add like a maybe a little run here just to spice it up a little bit okay and then going in adding swing adding random um and then maybe even going in and luckily that not luckily yeah luckily that has that little randomization of the timing so it's going to be a little bit more loose than the original groove would be uh, let's add that preset uh, velocity so, and if you want to just experiment with different velocities uh different octaves just press shift and press up or down all right so sometimes it's good to write a bass line in um in a higher octave just so you can hear what's going on okay 
So then just bring that up, bring that down a little bit. Um, and then sort of moving on to the next, uh, the next bit. So I'm, I want to bring in, I want to show you a technique um, called convert to MIDI or convert to melody. Uh, and this is where we can grab an audio track. So we've got all of these little tricks that we can employ to make the production journey a little bit easier. And, and like one of them, yeah, grab some like pitch quantizers or scale quantizers, but we can also rip from existing audio. So if we, I'm going to go to my little section and I've got this bit here. Um, so this is a, a little synth loop in B minor. Um, it's not going to go with any of my melodic parts. I'll just, I'll prove it. Just sounds horrible, right? Because it's the wrong key. Now, sometimes you can transpose it um, into a correct key, but a lot of the time, you know, it's, that's quite a difficult thing to do. Um, especially if you've got like a major chord and you, you're working, you know, in a minor key. But what you can do, and this gives you much more control as well, is you can ask, invite live to analyze uh, this data here. So what, like, what I'm going to do is right click it and show you rather than talk about it. So we've got four options. I'm going to choose the convert harmony to mi new MIDI track and harmony because harmony is more than one note at a time. And that's quite obviously a chord. If it was um, a melody, you pick melody and drums, drums. Slice is something else that we'll, we'll cover in some of the, um, in some of the other sessions. But I'm going to go to convert harmony and it's just going to try and work this out. And then it will spit it out on another MIDI track and then you get some, you know, it's done a pretty good job of this one. You do have to clean certain things up. It might duplicate. So here it's given, we can, we can actually bring this one down. So with that trick that I did before, shift and down. So we don't need this one anymore. And let's listen to this. Still out of, still out of tune. So here, maybe I'm just going to bring this up. And again, just try and get the notes a bit closer to each other because it's probably just misunderstood and pitched it right up. Let's bring this down. And you can also, even if it w wasn't wrong, you can use this shift and up and down to create some nice inversions. So taking the lowest note and making it an octave higher. So let's make an inversion the other way. So you get, it's, it's still, it's still, you know, the correct harmony, but you'll just get different colors of notes, colors of chords. Um, so I'm going to leave it like this and then um, actually get my scale function. And just place that in front. So now that's going to go with... So this could work as a little bit of a B section. So another section to help with the structure. So I'm also going to put the groove on. At least add some, a little bit of randomness. Um, and in this case, I'm going to choose something different. So at the moment it's, I'm um, using the same instrument as this electric piano. Uh, we've got some links to most things that, I that I've mentioned and pointed to today. Uh, one of them is this new emulation of a core Poly 800, which is this really lovely um, like Juno copy from the 80s. Lots of them are hanging around like this one, not working. So I was super happy when I realized that this free emulation was out. So if I just go into my third, my plugins, this is where anything third party is going to be. And I'm just going to put a um, 
this Fury 800 it's called. So you, you get a really kind of retro 80 sound. So you can go around, maybe I need to just change the envelope a little bit here. This needs to stop here. Let's. So you can have that kind of just supporting this main line in the background here. Tony, let me know if there's any questions that you have that have come up. Is everyone still there? He's gone somewhere. So we can maybe take this up and make it a little bit higher. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I was, um, I was, um, yeah, um, you know, protecting you lot from um, Fortnite overload. Um, <laughs> new, new season yesterday, people. New season. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, so um, there's a question about third party plugins, um, installing those and where they go. Um, perhaps we'll look at that near the end. Um, yep. just, just to give you a heads up, it's, um, it's 10 to 8 at the moment. Okay, so what um, I'm going to do is, uh, okay, I'll probably, I want to just brush on effects. So I'll probably do another sort of five minutes. Um, we've, we've touched on a range in any way, but um, it'll be good to sort of show people how they can apply effects and how they can sort of shape their sounds. Most definitely. Yeah. Okay, so what we can do here is, I'm gonna just delete this one. Um, okay, so I've got my, some of my elements. Let me, let me just layer up with another element here and maybe just uh, put in a big sustain note. We can press legato and that just sustains it for us. <laughs> So you can have a couple of variations like this. So effects wise, um, you know, these, these are just literally just straight out the packet sounds. So you can start to add a little bit of feel to them. So as I, you know, implied earlier or alluded to earlier, these drums can be processed together. So I'm just going to go to audio effects. You can search through them. There's going to be like different kinds of uh, different kinds of effects. So you have like some that are going to affect the time, some that are going to affect the dynamics so how hard things are hit. Um, here, I'm going to go to drum bus. That's just the easiest thing for drum buses. It instantly takes your drums um, into essential. like drum bus is essential on everything. <laughs> really? Yeah, and not just drums, right? Yeah, everything. <laughs> so this is without changing any of the parameters. So it's given it instant just judge. Um, and it's it's especially good for beginners because you can just add a compressor, give it some crunch. I like to do kind of extreme settings here, and then I just take the dry wet down. So you can hear it's bringing out the presence in all of the those shakers. So this is like a track insert. This is me putting um, an effect straight onto the track. And you can get some quite extreme um, results. Another thing that you can do is open the send. Um, so we've got the send button here. You'll have this automatically when you open Ableton. You've got sends and you've got return. So uh, the reverb and delay, this is one reverb. So the thing that makes um, a sample or a sound sound like it's in a large space. One reverb will then um, affect many things. So reverb A and reverb B. So I can just bring up A. So it's just allowing it to sound. You can then go into the reverb and, and that's, that's the track detail there. Start doing some interesting things. So maybe add a chorus. So giving the reverb a little bit of movement. Um, the bass here, just to make it 
pop a little bit more, we can look at, again, another dynamic effect, something like an amp. So yeah, it was kind of crying out for that. We can go to a, a bass setter. Um, and then let's go to, and you can apply more than one effect on things. So you can put a, a guitar pedal on this or a saturator um, and so on. You can also, let's go to this bit. You can add some delay. Um, so yeah, you've, you've got the, the option to put things straight onto the track, which you sometimes need, but wherever possible, I would advise to use these send and returns because you get um, a sense of cohesion throughout your whole track. Um, so yeah, that was like a whirlwind tour around Ableton Live 10.1. Um, any questions? I'm happy to answer. Now's your chance, people. So thank you, Mel, so far. Um, um, we've got five minutes left, and I think what would be really useful um, is definitely make time for questions. Um, and as you know, everyone, this is um, CDR's interactive learning se um, sessions. Interactive meaning is for you. So any questions, please feel free to answer. Um, don't be afraid, even if you think it's a really simple question. The whole point is, is that this is a safe space to learn um, with like, with your peers. So yeah, come through. So we've got a question from um, Chris, Christian so far. Um, can you have more than two sends and returns? Yes. Um, I didn't want to overface you with the amount that I usually have, but yeah, like, um, I use about eight. I've never run out, but yeah, you can use as many. Um, it's really good to have different types of reverbs so you can push things to different spaces. So, you know, I have about four reverbs, two types of delay. Um, you can even put, let me go back to share. You can even put uh, like things like saturated. So I was talking about dynamic EQs. Um, oh, wrong shortcut. So open a return track this way, and um, maybe you put on, maybe you put a drum bus on that return, um, crank it up, so give it loads of crunch, put it in hard, give it some compression. And then you can actually give everything the same amount of dirt. Uh, that's something that I like to do with, um, there's a, um, a sound toys plugin called Decapitator that works really well on that channel cool uh another question from francis um thank you francis um what's the difference between the reverb in the sends and reverbs in the audio effects um so reverb in the reverb in the sends. so what it used to be the case of like this the dry and wet and the fact that when you put reverb on as an insert so a reverb here you would let me let me show you you can't see what i see can you let me go I'm just going to keep on my screen. Cool. Now we can. <laughs> right. So if, if I had this reverb here, hold on. we can affect the amount of reverb with the dry wet. You can, you can, you can hear that your original signal soon starts getting like swallowed by the reverb. So what if we were to put exactly the same reverb on a return, it's not exactly the same, it's slightly different, but we can, oh, that's the louder one. Even though I've given it 100%, you, you've still got a good picture of that dry signal. And not only that, what we can do on, on, on this wet signal on the return is start to shape that reverb and further separate it from our original track. So you've just got so much more control um, so unless you really wanted it to um, completely colour your sound, then um, it's a really good idea to, you know, sort of control it on a return. Cool. Nice one. Thank you. Um, great question, Francis. Mm -hmm. um, Liam, you're late, man. It's fine. It's recorded. <laughs> so, so you're good. <laughs> um, so um, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, well, thoughts, um, first and foremost. Um, 
first of all, people, sorry about the chatting in the background. I've told you about the fort nothing already. It's um, you should be over it. Um, <laughs> um, so a couple of things, Mel. What you showed is really insightful. Thank you so much. Um, but w in terms of um, people taking this, say, um, you know, participants has, is where they are now. You know, they've got these columns with one clip, maybe a couple of variations. How would you then take some of these ideas and then start to flesh out in some, into some kind of arrangement in this session view page? That's yeah. one question. And then another question is looking at the balance between elements. What should people be looking at? Because obviously you've got bass, you've got drums, you've got, you've got percussion, you've got some synth pads. What considerations should people have when it comes to actually balancing those elements to make the track um, you know, um, clearer and have definition? Okay, yeah, so um, I'll answer the last one and then I'll, yeah, I'll, get, I'll go to the, the previous. But generally, if you, you know, I, I look at it like, you know, a, a really traditional band and that each member of the, the band, like, is occupying, um, like, a part of the frequency spectrum, right? So you've got the bass player, um, you know, taking care of all the low end. Um, and, you know, it's, it's low and it's powerful. So it needs to be kind of simple. If you think about bass lines, they're usually really simple and they're really powerful. As soon as it gets really cluttered, it's just going to eat up all the energy. So I kind of look at it like which part of the frequency is, is like unoccupied. So if I have like lows in the bottom end and lows in the top end, but there's like nothing in the middle, then I start to think about um, what instruments can fill that. So, so in terms of balance, um, generally, I'll have about five elements, five instruments. So I'll have drums um, doing what they do. Don't need to explain that. The bass line, as I've just said. Um, and then just something taking the, the, the harmony along. Um, and then the melody doing maybe just a little bit just to, to colour things. So like musically, to get a good understanding of that, it's a question of listening to as many tunes as you can and starting to analyze it with, with sort of these tools that you're learning as you're learning to produce and really sort of interrogating what the baseline's doing and what part does it have to play. Then there are other considerations like mixing, which we will we'll touch on in a few weeks. Uh, but generally when we're looking at musical ideas, um, there were certain roles certain instruments have if that makes sense. Cool, thank you. Uh, and also, you know, a, a good consideration is that, you know, you don't have everything playing all at the same time, right? So this is, um, this comes on to the structure um, question. And, you know, we saw how we could start. Uh, let's just, I can press stop to everything here. I can start with just a kick. Tighten that up again. Um, so maybe we start with these elements. Start thinking about the intro and you're teasing people into the track. So I use these scenes, so these rows across. If I press these arrows or these play signs, it will play that whole row. So I can start constructing my track around these sections. I can rename that and call this intro. Um, and then build up and break and drop or whatever. And then just start actually painting and experimenting with these, these sections. So maybe, and I could call that, you know, just kick. So we can duplicate this down. Maybe this comes in the second section. Maybe this comes in the second section as well. So this is where you start establishing um, like your structure. So I'm going to press stop again. And so that baseline is not going to go there. Okay. And then you can bring in the next bit. And then the next bit. Uh, and then maybe I'll bring this in like much later. So yeah, it's just, uh, let's do all that. It's basically just you, you go around and, and you can sort of jam out in this way. This is, this is why I like it. You can either play whole scenes or you can just add little clips as you go. 
um, whatever suits you. And, and once you're happy with, you know, once you've got an idea of what you want your track to sort of sound like as a finished track, hit record at the top and then just play it. And so what you'll see in the arrangement view is that it will start recording in this sort of linear way where there's a beginning and end your parts. I mean, you can just go through. But then also stop things. Like so. So then once you've, once you've done this and you have your parts here, hit back to arrangement and then you can start playing with these, shuffling them around, looping them out in exactly the same way as you would do in GarageBand or Logic or Reason. Cool. Last one. Um, what do you think, guys? Um, any thoughts, um, questions on this side of things? Cool. Thanks, John. Good to see you. Any thoughts, people? How's it been anyway? Has it has this been useful so far? <laughs> nice one, good. Thanks, Marina. Yep. Okay. Yep. Lots of acknowledgement there. Okay. Good. That's great. That's really good to hear. Um, okay. So listen, it's it's five past eight now. Um, you know, we were going to finish at seven. So uh, at eight, sorry. But I think, you know, let's use this time. You know, at least five minutes to kind of answer any of your you know any of your questions just want to reiterate that this is you know an interactive learning series and it was it was you know it was designed for you you know this idea that we want everyone to be able to have a space to kind of create music and develop you know your inner musician your inner producer um and we've always got personal questions that you know sometimes we're afraid to ask them you know so this is your this is your opportunity um and this will be the format moving forward um essentially an hour an hour or so lots of times for you to ask questions um regardless of you know you know the level um yeah so let's get that going yes yeah, true nice one Ollie. in terms of that full bucket freebie. we could there were a couple of questions about um where to get one the, the the set and also the video where you can see that it's recording so we're going to email you guys some links but it will also be on our website at some point maybe an edited one without my mumblings uh, but yeah, we'll send it out to you. Wicked. Okay. Um, all right. I think we. Oh, hold on one second. There's too much. <laughs> it's just popped out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like my mumblings? Okay. That's just me, man. You can take that if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay. So um, so thank you all for uh, joining. Um, so there's a couple of questions in terms of the the upcoming sessions um so what we're going to do because it's been really it's been really special you know we're going to see if we can release a few more tickets so some of you who weren't able to get tickets for um the upcoming sessions will make some available so just check socials for that um you'll also be emailed a feedback form um so we can get uh, your thoughts on um you know how the session went for you personally so rather than embarrassing you here um we thought we'd um yeah just let us know what you think. You know, we're trying to create this learning experience that's about for you, right? So, you know, those of you who know CDR, you know it's about creating a safe space for music to develop. And, you know, learning, creating music, creating your identity with music is very much part of what we do. And it's very much part of you, right? So we want to make sure that we create platforms and resources and tools so you can be who you want to be, you know? So yeah, feedback form with you tomorrow. Um, and also if you want to hit us up personally on the either, you know, you know way to find us anyway. Um, all right. That'll be sent tomorrow. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so you've got about 30 seconds to get a, a final cheeky question in. Before... Yeah, there were, there were a couple that just came through. So one is, uh, what's your view of using instruments and effects with in suite versus third party ones? Um, I, I use like both. Um, I think it's a really good, like using the stock plugins, like generally if you, if you have a third party effect, 
you would you'll be able to achieve the same thing but maybe using a, like a number of plugins so plugins are like the stock ones ableton ones are a really good way of you just understanding these transferable concepts um that you have also you've got that really nifty info button that can tell you all about it um but then you might be able to you might find like like a mental plugin that you can't imagine so someone else has done it for you so I would generally, I wouldn't rush into buying third party stuff because like it is crazy. And you, as soon as you start looking at them, then like the cookies get you and, you know, tempt you to buy things at all times. So just try and try and do it within Ableton. Um, if there's something, if there's a, something that you really like the sound of, then maybe look at Black Friday sales. Pains of me to say that, but yeah. Yeah. But there's also a whole range of um, free, great free plugins as well, right? So, um, so um, Taylor has asked um, what recommends we have in terms of plugins. So what we'll do is in the follow-up, we'll, we'll um, make available a kind of hit list of um, plugins that we recommend. We'll prioritize kind of free ones, mm -hmm. um, but we'll also give you a heads up on ones that, you know, we've checked out. Because, um, yeah, as Mel said, the whole plugin third party thing is a, is a minefield. Um, and, you know, if, if you're starting off with music making, and kind of creating your identity, working with, you know, working with your, the tools that you have available and kind of mastering Ableton in this case um, is a really good way to start before start thinking about external plugins. Unless, of course, there's a plugin out there or a, a specific effect you want. Um, you know, for example, you know, Ableton has a bit built in distortion, which works really well. But, you know, when you start getting into the world of distortion, you'll see there's different kinds of distortion and different styles and timbres of distortion that you can get with third party plugins. But it's always good to start at the root first because a it's part of the package that you, you've got um and then your understanding will come from one place a kind of focused place cool um okay all right is that oh then one final question um in terms of installing third-party plugins um so let me touch on that briefly before we wrap it so for example if someone's really new to um you know using ableton and they do have an opportunity say they wanted to you know um, install that um, Fury 800 that we mm. you demonstrated. How would they go about installing that? Uh, yeah, so there's, um, I, it's been a good few years since I've used the PC, so I can only tell you with a, um, a Mac, but I mean, there is information out there, but essentially sometimes you will get a package that you can just click and it will install your, it'll install the plugin for you. I'm just gonna go to share so I can show you. It'll install the plugin. If you've got your, if you, if live is open, uh, hit preferences, just here, or command and comma, uh, and just scroll down to plugins and then rescan it. And then you'll see that it comes up. That's if you've installed it in a package um, or it will just find it when you open live. But generally, let me go into my finder. If, especially if you're getting a free plugin, and I, I think that the Fury 800 works like this, it will just be like um, a VST application. Um, so, there we go. So what you have to do is you've got to go to Finder at the top and click Go. And it's one of these, uh, one of these titles, but to open that, if you hit alt then library you can see that library pops up and appears so you go into library and you go to audio go to plugins and then you drop your um vst into that because that's a little bit of a bother i've just got a um a little shortcut here and this is where all of my like free um free plugins are so yeah, that's the way to do it. Um, and there's like a similar method with a PC, but I just, um, I can't remember how to do it. Cool. So on that note as well, um, you know, on the Mac, there's, you know, there's two main plugin formats. So there's VST, which is the format that kicked it all off virtual studio technology. That's basically what it, what it is. And that was the first format that enabled people to create software based plugins. Um, it started on a PC, then went onto the Mac. And then Apple basically designed Apple's own version of VST, which is basically audio units. So if you are based on the Mac, um, you'll find that plugins are either, you know, VST or VST3, or it's audio unit. So um, take your pick, you know, um, but, but if you want um, your plugins to be compatible across 
all um, um, software, then audio units is the way to go. Um, because for example, Logic doesn't read VSTs, whereas Ableton does. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're finding plugins out there. Nice one. Okay. Oh, one, <laughs> one cheeky last question. Okay. Um, is there a way to de de um, see the artist support you guys? Oh, for you. oh that's very nice of you, um, Azadine. It's very nice of you. Um, yes, there is. Um, um, we'll give you some information um, with a follow-up email. But I think, um, you know, it's all looking towards us, you know, setting up some kind of Patreon in some, in some form moving forward. Um, but for now, um, um, there isn't anywhere, but we'll let you know when something is available. But thank you for asking. That really means a lot. Cool. All right, people. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you, Mel's. Awesome. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. Awesome. Smashed it. Smashed it. Smashed it. The silent claps. <laughs> uh, cool. wicked. Yeah, I loved it. And it, yeah, it was it was amazing to see so many faces as well. See someone from Tai Chi as well there. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice one, everybody. Yeah, um, so we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Indeed, feedback. We'll send you your feedback forms tomorrow, um, and yeah, we'll probably set up our PayPal as well. Thanks, Kath. Yeah, take care, people. Get creating. Um, if you haven't got an Ableton um, trial already, go for it. Make some music um, and uh, prepare for. We pre we look forward to hearing your music at the next CDR. So, whether it's yeah. online, online coming shortly, more details into on socials, um, or until we meet again. But stay safe. See you soon.